a few things that you should consider before building your own battery pack. Building battery pack can be dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, please don't. If you're not sure about something, don't do it. We're talking about uh, damage to your property that can occur if you spark up the batteries. It could be a, a health uh, risk as well. If you burn yourself or do something silly with the tool, I don't know. I don't want to be held responsible for it. I am not a professional tutor on building the batteries. This is only how I've done it. It works well for me, but please guys, ensure that you are comfortable with doing what you'll see in this video before you even attempt to do it. Please, build safely. Guys, it's a long video. So in the first video, what I've done, I've broken down the video into timeline. So here it is, a timeline for this video right here. So you can skip the video to a part that interests you the most, or you can watch the whole lot. So here it is. Just take a screenshot of this. You can always refer back to it as a guide. Take a look closely. We're going to talk about all of this in a really massive, massive detail. Well, that's how I make my videos. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Are you looking to build a DIY battery pack but don't know where to start? This channel is perfect for you. I already have a really detailed tutorial on how to build the battery pack, designing, BMS wiring, how to solder, all that kind of stuff. I will leave that video on the link in the description below. Take a look. I am building a brand new, really awesome, high quality, electric mounting board and this is the beauty right here and this beauty deserves a big powerful battery pack and this is exactly what I am about to do that's my next step so for this video I'm not gonna go into the same detail as in the video on the link in the description below I'm just going to show you how to build a block battery pretty much a massive block they're gonna go on the top of the deck. The bottom of the deck battery already built for Tsunami. That's this beauty right here. So decide for yourself what you need. A flexible battery like the Tsunami. So take a look on the video in the description below. Or you need a block. Something for like a tramper build or some sort of mounting board build because you don't want the battery underneath on a mounting board. You'll be hitting them rocks, you'll be going over weird terrain, hopefully, and you don't want anything that can cause you problems underneath the deck. So, let me tell you what I am about to build. So, we are about to build a battery which is 12S7P. We're going to be using Molly cells, 21700 Molly cells, so 4200 milliamp in one of these little cells if you want to get uh, to understand what all these uh, milliamps and uh, battery capacity or battery voltages s or p is i've got another tutorial which explains everything about the cells the parallel connections the series connections and that video yes you are right it is already on the link in the description below so check it out check it out so, today we're building a 12S 7P Molly cells. I think it's quite good for what I'm building. The board I mean, the models I'm choosing, it's gonna be something like this, what you see right there in the front of you. So it's gonna be two 6S uh, packs in series because I want the shape of it to be as small as possible to fill my beautiful deck, by the way, videos one two and three are already available on my channel this is the deck all the parts that we're using how to customize your deck so take a look so i've got a battery pack idea the battery pack all in total will be roughly about 160 wide it's going to be roughly about 200 long and it's going to be roughly about 130 tall so it's a really small footprint, a bit solar, but nice and powerful battery pack. This battery pack will be 50 volt and it will be 29,400 milliamp. So 29 uh, amp hour. 
that is big enough for you to probably cover I would say 20 miles of proper off-roading if you are heavy block if you use like a street tires a bit smaller then you can cover a bit more so this is it for this uh, warm-up I can see you are still interested and that's why you're still watching this video because video is awesome and will give you all the information so we are going to now go over the build so for this build we're going to use something different we're going to use some spacers we're using the smart BMS obviously with a uh, Bluetooth dongle you want to talk to your board via the app you want to know what's going on with your board when you're charging discharging or just sitting there on the shelf so let me bring you a bit closer come 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 just a bit closer okay this is close enough that's it stay right there so for this battery build we're not going to just glue the cells together like normally you would which is nothing wrong with it anyway we're going to use the cell trays okay these are ABS really thin cell trays that have perfect spacing between the cells and you can configure your battery to the way you want it to be and well that's it pretty much you got some uh, perforated uh, parts right here that you can cut the battery um, holder to get the DP rating you want. I will leave the link to where I bought this from in the description below and yeah you can check it out if you want to. Again guys I'm not selling promoting a seller I'm just showing you where you can get these parts because some of you did say I'm not leaving any links in description so here we go this video I'm gonna leave some links in description below where you can buy this stuff from okay so this video is literally meant for people to copy an exact battery that I have just built I'm not gonna explain to you why and what and where watch other videos and you can design your own battery if you want to I'm just going to show you exactly what I have done okay so for starters you lay out your trays, you check your batteries for the voltage, making sure they all are equal, stand the stuff, and then you lay them all out. We're going to build it so that so that each battery block looks like this. So we got seven cells in parallel, and we got six in series in one block and exactly the same but reversed in the second block it is reversed so it's easier for you then to do the series connections but you'll see later on what I'm talking about so what we're going to do is we're going to actually stack the batteries up and we're going to glue them all together I'll show you how I am gluing them together so as you can see this is the step number one you put the trays so that on one side the trays meet together nice and neat as you see on this side you lay the batteries out positive out negative out positive out negative out you know what I'm talking about and then you just cut the plastic where you don't need it anymore in order to fix those battery cells in the trays you're using simple heat gun however you're not going to just flood the uh, cell as normally you're just going to dab a little bit on the cell to make it stick so let's do one together with you so this is already stuck together so now before you glue the cells in to the holsters you should check the voltage of each cell well that gives you a little bit of indication if they're all kind of okay and here we go We're going to take the fresh tray and these cells are loose they're just laid out so we know that we need to get this cell stuck to this tray right here okay we will need a nice and straight surface because after you stick them all together you want them to be nice and straight so when you're applying the nickel strip over them 
they don't stick up different way around. So, cells are lined up. You know that's exactly how you want them on a tray. Pull the cell back. Put a little blob of hot glue on the back of it. Stick it back in. Press it in. Press it down, making sure that it's nice and straight and equal. And you repeat the same process with the next cell over. And you do this 12 times over. The spacer gives you that perfect space between the cells. It gives the battery just a little bit space to breathe. Well, we're going to wrap it up with all sorts of stuff anyway. So heat will stay inside really and truly. However, it is a little bit much easier than doing a traditional fish paper wrapped pee pack. But it's up to you. So now we know that we're taking this... Uh, pack out of this out of this group right here and we're going to repeat this process with the next group over simple as that So as simple as that, you got yourself a 6S 7P pack. So this is half of the battery we're about to build. Now we're going to build the second part. And this is how simple it is to cut these trays. You know where your cells are. You know what line you need to cut it at. Just bend it right there, take the cells off, this is the bend, and just break it off. Simple. Done. That's the tray right there. So now we're going to repeat this process on this side of the battery. So the nice part of the uh, trays where they meet together nicely. You got negative right here. The other side, where you got the parts nice and neat meeting together, you got a positive. So when you join them together to create a one big pack, your series connection is going to be inside. Don't worry, you'll get it as soon as we crack on further with this build. So, I'm going to build this one quickly. Give it a sec. Okay, so now you have two beautiful blocks glued together and that was really simple, wasn't it guys? Nice and fast. Probably took me, I don't know, 15 minutes for both, maybe 20. So now we've got them all together. We're now going to do the series and parallel connections. We're going to use 25 by 0.2 millimeter pure nickel strip. And obviously we're going to spot weld them. Next step guys, just a bit extra protection of the positive of each uh, cell. I'm using the, uh, the plastic ones, whatever they are, vinyl or I don't know. In this battery build, some of our serious connections will be parallel connections, yeah? So we're going to make a template to cover the area. It's going to be much easier then to cut the nickel. We try it out and we're happy. Then we are going to make many more.
Okay, so you make yourself a template, make sure you're happy with it, it's nice and perfect, no sharp edges and it covers the cells just enough. I don't like doing the tabs straight away because I'm still going to see how I'm going to run the uh, BMS cable, so the little tabs for the BMS I'm going to uh, weld on later on, same as I done with my first pack. But now we're going to make just a few more of these. Just a quick tip guys, if you for instance manage to, I don't know, uh, misshape the uh, nickel or you got some wrinkles and you really hate it or you got like perfectionist in you, use something straight and steel. I don't know, could be a screwdriver maybe, uh, the Philips one or like something like a rod. Put in a flat surface and just run it across the nickel. Puts it back in a perfect nice shape. See? You notice the spot weld the cells, I'm using the K weld. If you guys want to see a full review, take a look in the link in the description below, you'll see a full review of this uh, spot weld. I do always check how many joules do I need for the full battery before I spot weld a certain nickel. So have a run, uh, like a uh, test run. Solder it on. So after you spot welded it, try peeling it off. And it is quite tough to peel off. And that's only with one spot weld. With six or eight, it's going to be solid. Bear in mind that you will have to increase the power when you use the battery of the spot welder more and more, but it's not a problem. Look at that. Okay, so next step we're going to uh, spot weld the series parallel connections, and we're using the uh, 25 by 0.2 millimeter uh, nickel. Be careful because sometimes you get a nickel which states to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2 uh, millimeter, but it's not. This one here is looking pretty much similar, but it is 0.16. So I'm going now for the thicker one, actual 0.2. And uh, in order to uh, spot weld this all together, I'm using the uh, K weld. Yeah. If you guys want to know about this uh, spot welder, I got a uh, full uh, review of this. Take a look, the video is on the link. Yes, you guessed it right. So now, as I said, I'm not going to go into much detail. This is just for you guys to follow uh, my recipe if you want to. So, this is the design of the uh, cells uh, and the packs, okay? 6S, 6S. Watch carefully how one of the packs is built. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Next one. Is exactly the same way positive negative positive negative okay the way it's gonna happen the way it's gonna work we're gonna have our main negative on this side here 
on internal, fold it over with a main negative sticking out this way. A main positive will be right here on the other pack. So this is your main positive, fold it over, sticking out. So I do, well, half marked it up for you guys so you can see future in a uh, build. M minus, so main negative, main positive, okay? So take a visual look of the way this, uh, the cells and packs look like. Follow the same layout, simple as that. Now, what we need to do is, let's go over the uh, power flow. This way you'll understand where the parallel series connections needs to be, okay? So this is our main negative right here. So power flow through. So these packs, sorry, these cells got to get connected in parallel and also in series to the next P pack. So it's going to be a strip of nickel that we already successfully cut out together, covering that. Okay. Then from this negative goes over across over to the positive and jumps to this one. Over across and jumps to this one. So pretty much on this side here. We will be installing, spot welding, a nickel strip here, here, and here. Okay, so now my favorite part. Okay guys, so one side is now spot welded. Now you need to remember how your pack is going to be put together. Okay, remember the power flow. Main negative through, jump through the pack onto this side. Now it needs to jump. So you need to do a weld on this series parallel connection right there. From there, it's gonna jump over, through, and then into here. Okay, so we spot weld in this side here and this side here. Before we do that, I wanted to show you or share with you a few tricks. If you're wondering why I got the gloves on, and yes, they are matched to orange, my favorite color, is because the probes do get really hot if you keep on welding and welding and welding. Also, I have uh, gotten rid of all the of the uh, plastic uh, adapter that was holding the probes. I think this way it's a bit faster and you can also get the spot welds exactly where you want. So a few tips. Imagine, or not imagine, I'll show you. You put a nickel over the cells. Okay. So at the moment you can see clearly exactly where your positive uh, terminals are on the cells. However, after you put a nickel over, it's not as easy to see where the actual tab is. So when you spot weld, you don't want to kind of, you know, hit the negative side by mistake or whatever not. So what I do, put the nickel down, use a magnet to hold the nickel down as well. But also, a little trick, you know the insulators you get. If you pop the insulator, the middle bit, straight through, you get a perfect size for the positive terminal. So if you don't have the, uh, you know, not the skill, but the practice of remembering where the terminal actually is, what you can do is trace out the terminal on the cell. So you lay it out just like that and use something sharp like a puncher tool or a needle and you can make yourself a nice little round mark exactly showing you where the terminal is. So you can spot weld 
with ease. Okay? So that's number one. Number two, try to stay away from the center of the negative part of any cell. I only learned this a few weeks ago. Good um, uh, tip, someone commented on my video and I researched it. There is some sort of, I don't know what it is, but some sort of internal battery built thing. Something is right here, right in the middle, and you overheat it, you might potentially ruin the battery. So we're going to stay away from the center of the negative side of the cell. And as you can see, that's exactly what I was doing. Making those smiley faces all the way around, but keeping it away from the center. Okay, so this is how I do it. Nickel is quite thick, so we're going to adjust the K-weld to uh, about 52-ish. Yeah, about 52, that should do. Gloves on because they do get really hot. And what I do, while magnet is holding the nickel together to the cells without moving it around, we're now going to just tap it down so it stays down. Okay, and the same on the other side. What I'm using, guys, you see I'm using that uh, soldering mat, so it slides around my desk nicely, so I can position the battery, so it's uh, the best way to kind of, you know, get the angle for spot welding. Okay, make sure you put the probes on the opposite side as far away as possible from each other. Now magnet comes off, now your nickel is in place, doesn't go anywhere. And as you can see, the 52, especially on this uh, my setup, it works really well. The welds are really nice. They're not burned, but they look nice and strong. So that's the good looking weld right there. If you try peeling that off, you'll rip the nickel and that's what you want. That's it, so we're going to carry on. And now we got a little mark on the positive, so you know exactly where you need to spot weld, which is quite cool. Well, pretty much like that, all the way through. One more strip there, and then we're gonna do the next block. See you in a second. Okay guys, so now all these cells are spot welded together to parallel series connections. Let me show you one more time what we're doing here. This way you are nice and clear and understand what we're doing. Okay, so you got one block and second block. One block is 6s second block is 6s we're going to connect them together in series that will give you the 12s okay so you always have to check the power flow through your blocks this way you know that your series parallel connections are installed correctly well you will know when you put the uh, nickel on the wrong side and sparks up but hopefully that's not going to happen so Let's go over this one more time. Now, remember we have marked up the master negative and master positive. So what you do is, you go through it logically. Negative, through the cells, through the pack, through the P pack. It now needs to jump over, hence why you've got the nickel plate, over, through, to the other side, over, through, to the other side, over, through, through the other side, over, through, to the other side, over, hence why you got the nickel plate. And from here, 
we're going to have to make a serious connection between the two blocks. This is next step. So imagine there is a connection here. Bang. Over. Hence why we got a nickel plate. Boom. Over. Nickel plate. Through. Over. Nickel plate. Through. Over. Nickel plate. Through. Over. Jump. Bang. And that's your main positive. So this is where we're going to have the leads. The main positive negative leads will be right here. Coming out. Hopefully you got it guys. Cannot make it as clear as this. Please remember exactly where the nickels are on my packs. So this is the way it's going to be assembled. Right there. This is one of the packs. And this is the other side. And this is second pack. And the other side. Okay. So now let's move on to the next step. We're going to make the main negative and main positive tabs. It's pretty much using the nickel, which we're going to spot weld on here. We're going to roll the nickel into like a funnel. And we're going to put a cable in there and solder it in. Nice and simple. Let's do this. Okay guys, this part here you don't have to do, like definitely do not have to do. I had the nickel already pre-cut, the thin one, uh, 0.16 millimeters, so I have doubled up on the nickel plates. But again, you don't have to do that, it's just me. Okay guys, so I have made the uh, master uh, negative now. So as I said, it's the uh, nickel bent over and also a uh, silicone high temperature cable soldered on all the way across. So this is our master negative. This is what's going to go onto your EC. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how I made it. This way, if you are interested and you like the way it looks and uh, you feel it's solid enough, you can follow the recipe, okay? For this build, I'm going for 6 gauge cable. You might think it's a bit of an overkill. Uh, maybe it is. You can probably get away with 8 gauge as well. However, ain't gonna hurt. Okay, so step number one, obviously we're gonna cut a bit of nickel as long as the... Uh, pack length is and we're going to bend it in half. I'm using a uh, metal ruler and a vise to do this nice uh, sharp bend because this 0.2 millimeter nickel is quite tough. Okay now we're going to do three tabs. You'll find out why we're doing this in a second. This is something I came up with. I think it's um, making your life a bit easier for the next step. So we're taking a tab of a smaller nickel. Uh, one at the beginning, one in the middle, one at the end. And you will spot weld it down. But do not go past the middle of this uh, space on a uh, bent over a uh, nickel strip. Yeah? Because... We will need that space to spot weld again. So that piece goes right there. Okay, now we're taking the cable that we're going to use for the positive. We're going to cut the insulation off of it. 
so the length of the uh, nickel strip and just cut insulation off of that to expose the uh, at, at cable uh, strands Okay, now, so this is what these tabs are for. Because we need to solder this uh, cable onto our nickel, I really don't want to be trying to catch it. Because it does tend to slide about, run away. So what we're going to do, we're going to hold it in place using these tabs. So what you're doing now, you're going to bend the tab over the cable. You probably cannot see a call, can you? So you're going to bend the tab over the cable. Just like that. And now we're going to use like a sharp edge. I'm using the ruler again just to tuck the nickel nicely around the cable back down to the nickel strip try to keep it in the middle and now or you guessed it we're going to weld it down Beautiful. Now is the best part. We're going to have to solder all of this. However, now it's in place. It's not going to be jumping about, whatever not. Big soldering line, some acid, some solder, obviously, and make sure that you are working in a well ventilated area. I got front and back doors of the workshop open. So got a nice little breeze. Okay. So we are nicely soldered now. It does take a bit of patience, but absolutely doable, yeah. Now we're going to clean up all the um, residue from uh, acid and whatever not. That's the way, at least that's the way I do it. So if you're using, let's say, flux, uh, like a soldering flux, it does leave that uh, residue. And it's all sticky. So I just uh, use a rag, 
and clean all that residue off. Sometimes what I do, if you got like, you know, little dark burn up uh, uh, bits, you don't have to do this guys. Uh, as I explained before, this is just me. Sometimes I do things uh, a bit over than you should do. So I don't like stuff like that uh, when you got like dark parts. So I do clean them up. Also, we've got a few uh, little sharp edges here on the nickel uh, tabs that were holding the cable down. I'm going to uh, sand them down as well. Okay, so now I am happy with this connector, no sharp edges, all gone. Now we're going to sport weld this onto the pack. Check your pack again, remember which way it goes, remember which way this needs to be positioned. So we've got cables going this way, that's going to go straight on it like this, beautiful. Before you do put this uh, nickel strip on your cells, remember that the cells' bodies are actually the negative. Yeah? So you need to protect this part right here with a uh, strip of fish paper. Because you don't want this nickel to rub through the thin plastic insulation in the cell, because that's going to be a disaster. So I'm going to put a 25 millimeter strip of uh, fish paper right across here. Okay, so this is what you do. A bit of fish paper, just to give it that extra protection. Beautiful. Now, as simple as, we're going to spot weld this on. doubling up on this nickel right here because everything if it's doubled up everywhere it should definitely be doubled up on your uh, master positive and master negative so when you do that I would recommend you put some masking tape or electrical tape on the other uh, nickels because if you would cross this by mistake it will spark up you know and it's very easy to drop the nickel or you know misshift it just a thought. Do not, do not hit the negative part of the cell through the nickel. Okay, so we've done beautiful work. We have assembled two 6S uh, packs or blocks. Now, next step is to cut out a piece of insulating material for between the blocks. I'm going to use the epoxy glass fiber sheet or FR4 glass fiber. So, this is the material that's been used for like electronic motherboards. I'm using the 2 millimeter one. It's uh, quite thick and yes, it does not, uh, it's not conductive and that's what we, uh, what we want. So we're just going to push two boxes, boxes, why call them boxes now? So we're just going to push uh, both of the uh, blocks together, nice and tight. We're going to make sure that it does line up perfectly with the front of the uh, battery pack. 
we're going to go a few millimeters higher than the uh, master negative, master positive, just to you know stop any chances of anything uh, sorting out. <laughs> Okay, so this came out really nice, happy with the shape, perfect. Next step, put the blocks aside. We're going to connect these two blocks together with the last series connection, which is between these P packs right here. These are pretty much the only ones that don't have the uh, nickel strips uh, by now, okay? So idea is, we're going to put the uh, series connector, series uh, and parallel connector here, which is gonna be made out of two nickel strips. And the way I'm gonna do this, I already pre-cut them, is one of them will be over the positive as much as possible. And then the second one will be slightly shifted towards the negative. Okay, so we're kind of doubling up and always covering full width because we already I've doubled up on every single nickel But you don't have to guys. This is definitely an overkill, but it's just me. I want this battery bulletproof Okay, the reason for the tape is exactly what I was telling you before right now Everything is now connected in uh, parallel so wrong move and dropping that down wrong way will spark up So at least I'm covering the nearby uh, connections, so no mistakes Okay, so we're going to spot weld the last connection. Don't worry guys, you haven't missed anything. It's not like uh, you jumped the video. Uh, I was not happy with the way the folded uh, connection, last series connection came out to be. When the, fo when the battery pack folded, as you can see, one side of the cells is protruding by about two millimeters. So it's shifted. Just like this. That's the way the nickel folded, unfortunately. And yeah, I don't like that. I don't. So I want this nicely, perfectly straight. So when the battery, because this is the part that's gonna sit in the deck, when it's bouncing about, I want the weight dis distribution, not just on one side, but evenly across. So we don't disturb the spot welds. Don't know, maybe they will not, but I don't like it. So. We're going to strip this apart and I'm going to do the same fold double again. However, with the method I just told you or mentioned to you earlier, pre-fold the nickel. Well, got to stick to my guns, yeah? The battery pack is very important and could be potentially dangerous if it's not done correctly. So there's something I'm not happy with. I'd rather do it now than do it after when it's already on the board and something goes horribly wrong I have stripped uh, the last connection so we're gonna do this now so this is the part when we do the last series connection and the rest of it is going to just crack on in the video okay guys so for the last series connection what I do recommend you do and trust me I just tried it so this is second time I'm doing this when you position your blocks together, yeah, do not press them up against each other too tight. Give them, I would say, like a millimeter or two space just in between slightly. This is so when you fold the blocks together, you have just extra nickel that can fold and stretch. So it doesn't actually stress the nickel itself on the top of the cell. Okay, trust me. So this is the way we're going to do this. I'm using the uh, nickel, exactly the same one we used on the rest of the uh, series parallel connections. This is now cut to length, okay, and that's going to go in the middle, just like this. 
However, I'm going to shift it towards the positive connections slightly because we're going to use a second strip that is going to be shifted closer to the negative but just enough so we can still spot weld it to the positive side okay so now we're going to get rid of the sharp corners never have your sharp corners anywhere in the nickel get rid of those and make another one of these and we're going to pre-fold them And this is the end product that you should get. It's a nickel with the channel where we did bend it closed and then we opened it back up again. So now after we'll spot weld this, when you will shut the blocks together, it has a perfect channel to close into. So there's no surprises and no ripped spot welds. So let's spot weld this on it and we'll do the second one exactly the same way. Okay, so the wider part goes over the positive terminals and you will feel how nicely the nickel actually sits because it's got a little groove and just kind of jumps in exactly where it needs to be. Lovely. No sharp corners. And let's tack it down on a positive. Please ensure that these spot welds are definitely good. I know all of them has to be good, but this one specifically got to be spot on. Because when we fold over, we we'll still have a bit of pressure applied on these spot welds. Well, now we're going to get the negative down. Okay, so for the negative, what I found to work really well, if catch the first cell and the, well, end cell, the two end cells, because it's the end of the nickel, it's more pliable. Then when you know now your pack is not going to move anywhere, you can lift this pack up just slightly to get this angle of the nickel correct. So now you have no gaps between the negative tabs and the nickel. This way it doesn't pull the spot welds apart. Okay, so the first bit of nickel, the fold, the hinge, is now made. We are going to do exactly the same and bend another one. However, this time, as I said, we're going to stay back towards the negative tab a little bit more, but leave a little bit overhanging over the positive so you can still tack it down. Going to put the nickel down nice and carefully. Catch it. Line it up, and now the two grooves sat inside each other, so you know exactly where it needs to go. Okay, so we're going to just catch the positive. Because we're going through double nickel, I have increased the power of the spot welder by 
I think two joules so from 58 to 61 you only need just a bit more juice okay so the positive is now done you just press the negative or the second layer down to the negative just a little bit more to level it out or if the angle is not right, increase the angle of the block. Okay, so your final series parallel connection is now done. You're good to go, guys. So, let's check that everything is honky-dory. We're going to measure the voltage. I know it doesn't tell you overly too much, but it does tell you if overall voltage of uh, storage charge battery is exactly where we want it to be. 42.4, perfect. Precisely 3.5 per cell at 12S. Okay guys, please don't forget that this part here is from the future so you haven't seen insulation and the tabs part yet so now is the next step okay so the next step and by the way good tip if you are sports welding on auto keep the probes on very far opposite sides from each other so you don't accidentally connect them together so next thing we do I've cut out some uh, nickel strips we're going to spot weld them as tabs. These are for our positive, negative, and all the uh, positives for our BMS uh, harness. Okay, so what we're doing is before we protect this with fish paper and fold it, we're gonna get this spot welder going again, and we're gonna go one on the main negative, positive, 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 positive main positive folded okay simple as that I will line them long enough so when I'm done I will fold them into these spots right here where the cells would have gone if I would have went bigger what I'm going to do before I connect uh, uh, so spot weld this down I'm going to protect the edge of the cell just a bit more I know already got an additional ring on it but you know what it's not gonna hurt it's my battery, building for me, I want to do it once. Maybe overkill, but again, I don't want to connect the negative to positive by mistake, by vibration or whatever not. So just a little tab of fish paper. Just like that. Now I know it's definitely not going to rub in. And then, sports world, the tab. On this positive right there and the last one Okay, so the internal side, or the one we're going to fold, is now fish paper protected on both sides. I've also used a secondary layer of a narrow strip right here and here. Just to give it a bit more protection where I have uh, spot welded the tabs uh, for the BMS. Now, this is the important part, guys. You can clearly see where the center of the... Uh, Nickel is the one that is our last series parallel connection. It's very important to know what it is and I've positioned the fish paper So I can clearly see about two millimeter space right there This is where the nickel needs to bend because we're now going to fold this pack this way. Okay Everything is insulated. Everything is nice now we're using the Insulator sheet that we have cut out already 
to keep that straight edge. And now we're going to be slowly folding these blocks. I'm going to try to film as best as I can, but sorry, I need to concentrate on actually not screwing this up. this look how beautiful and straight this side came out to be absolutely gorgeous exactly what we were after this is the bottom of the pack so it's gonna sit this way just like that and it looks absolutely spot-on perfect nice and straight well happy with this guys well happy Okay guys, so before we carry on any further, I would like to clarify a few things or give you a bit more options uh, to build your battery. So what I'm doing here is just help and advice, you know, you don't have to follow this recipe, you don't have to follow or do what I do, okay? However, what I normally do for myself, if I don't know something, I watch different videos, I talk to different people, I collect all the information and then come up with my own decision and crack on. So why I'm saying this, six gauge cables. You don't have to use six gauge cables on a battery pack like this. You can get away with eight gauge cables. However, to me, it doesn't really matter. I can solder the larger cable. I will sleep better if I have just a little bit thicker cables. Resistance is lower. They will be hiding inside my bindings anyway. Plus, I don't know where I'm going to use this battery in the future. What if I go bigger? I don't know. Nickel. You don't have to go double nickel. If it's 25 mil wide by 0.2 millimeter thick, it's okay if you just do single layer. However, I couldn't find anywhere a literature that does tell me how much, how many amps can go through the 25 uh, millimeter 0.2 uh, nickel. So. I thought to myself, it's not going to hurt, I will double up. Why not? Again, more welding spots, uh, larger surface, there we go. Another thing I would like to mention, you know the fold that we've done right here, okay? So because I've used double nickel everywhere, I've used double nickel on a, on a fold as well. And it is quite tough to do. I've managed to do it, it's fine, no problem at all. However, you might find it a little bit frustrating uh, to get this fold done. You need some patience when you do it. So using a single nickel will most likely make this fold easier. Because when you got two nickels welded together and you're trying to fold them, it's quite hard. Also, there is a chance you can pop some of the welds on the top nickel because nickel to nickel welds are not as strong as the nickel to the cell welds. Okay, so that's that. Next thing. I went for a 0.2 millimeter insulation sheet between the uh, series packs. Again, you could go for one millimeter. It's gonna be easier to cut. You can actually cut it using scissors. I used the same material uh, for the Tsunami battery build. However, I went thicker. Up to you. Another thing I would recommend you do. For your sports weld, the nickel that becomes the folding nickel why not to get it into a slight shape of the bend prior to spot welding so take a uh, sharp uh, straight edge bend the nickel just slightly just to give it that beginning of the fold okay and then you straighten back up slightly and spot weld when you spelt weld one side then you put a battery pack on the other side, just slightly at an angle, and spot weld it. This way, the metal already knows where does it need to fold. So that's it, guys. Just a clarification. My, my mind, if you build a battery for yourself or for someone else, make it as best, as good as you can. You know, it can never be too safe with something that 
can damage your board or even further. Okay, now let's crack on. Next step. We now have to get more nickel strips spot welded onto the positive of the uh, cells on the other side, on the folded side now, for your BMS connections. I've done that so already, quite simple. Now we're going to insulate the top with fish paper, turn the pack around and do the next side of the pack. Same thing, little strips of nickel for our BMS. Okay, so fish paper is on. Let's turn around. Guys, do not unfold the packs. You will pop the welds, yeah? Because nickel is now folded. Don't unfold it. guys before we uh, start installing the BMS is I will insulate the cells underneath the tabs you don't have to do this again it's one one things that you know people will criticize overboard overkill however anything that I believe that could potentially rub uh, from vibration and break through the seal on the cell should be protected so I'm going to put a bit of fish paper underneath each tab on the cell. Okay, so fish paper is now installed underneath every tab uh, for the BMS. And we're going to now position, fix the BMS and start running the cables from it. So we literally connect the BMS, wiring the charging port, plug in the Bluetooth, plug in the BMS and try the battery out. Okay then, so we are ready now for the next step. For starters, let's go over BMS. Well, you can watch my first videos with more information about it. I'm using the uh, Smart BMS, uh, this one right here. It's for 12S. And it is charge and discharge. That's why it's that thick. Uh, I'm not going to use the discharge on the BMS because it's like a choke. Uh, this is only, I believe it was 60 amp. So there's no way I want this choke in my battery. My ECs will control the discharge. So we're using charge only. So the two cables on one side, battery minus, and also uh, the charge minus. Uh, we're going to get rid of one of each of these because we're only going to need one of each. So just, yeah, heat it up and desolder. Simple as that. Uh, or you can clip it right, right, right there, somewhere deep. Uh, this BMS is smart, so it comes with the Bluetooth module. And yeah, you can do all sorts of things uh, via the app. Watch your battery, see uh, what voltage is uh, the pack is. Uh, put it on static charge or the balance charge. <clears throat> so that's it really. Balance cables all the way to each tab. One more time, I do go over this uh, BMS uh, and uh, how to uh, figure out P pack 1 and 2 and 3 and how to wire this all in my previous video. Take a look, I will briefly cover this in this video. So, unplug the uh, main plug from the BMS uh, before you connect the cables to the uh, tabs. But it's quite straightforward. You got your main negative and then got your then you have your one, two, three, four, five, blah blah blah, uh P, P packs, yeah, and then you got your main positive. Simple as that. Before we carry on, what I will do is I'm going to use the same uh, plastic that I was using to insulate the blocks between each other to mount uh, the BMS. So we're going to cut out the plastic just big enough. To cover the surface uh, and maybe with we'll say uh, 10 millimeters all the way around this is just to give it a bit extra protection because anything metal this is aluminium here 
I don't think you should be rubbing on your cells. Just a quick tip, if you want to chop the cable so it's like nice and clean, nothing is sticking out after you cut it, just a small cut is, and then jam the cable in somewhere in a vise or something and pull on it. When you pull on it, while you're pulling on it, you get the cut is as low as you can, cut. And you get this really low, very nice cut. So you don't have to desolder. It's not gonna touch anything. Okay guys, so next step, we're going to scratch up all the tabs, the surface of it, just with the sandpaper. It makes the solder stick to nickel much better. And we're gonna put a nice little tab of solder on each one of them. Okay, so I made the plate of the same material just a bit bigger than BMS itself so I can use these lips right here to tape down BMS to my pack and to hold it down well just a blob of old trusted hot glue okay guys so we are ready for the next step is actually wiring the BMS so what did I do uh, so far as you can see all the tabs are done make sure you've got six positive tabs out on each block okay so I've got um, positive one two three four five six nice one so we got positive one two three four five six brilliant and I also brought out one negative out sorry right here that is for the uh, main negative for the uh, BMS okay so this is the way i've positioned my bms so we've got the probes at the top sorry the main main um, uh, connections at the top the bms is now stuck on the side of the battery pack and the rotation of it is so that the battery negative can wrap right over and get connected to the battery main negative yeah this is your charge uh, minus and also from here we're going to go straight on to our balance uh, tabs. Let me show you. Just like that. Now, obviously, we're going to spread them out neatly, but that's the idea. So think how you position your BMS. You know, it doesn't have to be there. You can position it anywhere you want, but think how you're going to run the cable so they need to. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to start with connecting the... Uh, battery negative off of the BMS onto your battery main negative but what I wanted to mention anytime you run cables across your cells or where your cables crossing try not to do that but if you absolutely have to always use an additional layer of fish paper to protect the surface because so you don't want vibration to work through the insulation rub through and then short something out I normally put a bit of fish paper and then secure it down with captain tape. Okay, so the negative um, off of the BMS to the battery is now done, nice and neat, taped down, safe, good. So we don't need uh, the negative uh, terminal or the master negative exposed anymore. So we're going to protect it with some uh, fish paper just to make it nice and safe. Okay guys, so number one, it's always good to reset your desk, meaning stop, take the pack of the desk and clean up all the shit that you don't need anymore. All the bits of nickel laying about and all sorts of stuff you don't need. It feels nice, gives you a bit of more energy. Well, maybe it's just me. However, next step. So the negative from the BMS is now connected, soldered onto the master negative. 
it's all taped up, taped down nicely so it doesn't rattle, doesn't move around. We have protected the master negative, master positive with fish paper and also with captain tape. As neat as you can do it, well, captain tape is quite sticky so you can do quite a neat job on it. I have also ran the cables away from the BMS for the dongle and I've taped them down and they will be coming out of the hitch uh, wrap in the same area as the power cables because so I didn't want to make another hole on the side and then hole in here there's going to be single hole cut out for all three to get out of the uh, battery pack the reason why I brought this out just in case if dongle will fail will I have it on the top of the battery pack this way you can always unplug it and plug a new one in I doubt that something will go wrong with the cable itself but the dongle should be out also, depending on the structure of your battery enclosure or the material, like I'm going to be using carbon fiber, you might want this, you know, on a bit of a lead because you might want to connect that or stick it to a, a battery enclosure from underneath. So reception is better instead of tucking it somewhere inside the battery itself. Next thing is I have ran a bit of uh, captain tape all the way around the pack. As you can see to keep the BMS in place and also to keep the pack from opening up right here in the middle because remember it's folded it's like a book okay so this is where we are at this particular moment okay, guys so next step is to uh, finalizing or to understand how to wire up your BMS. You got all these cables with it, but don't worry, it's quite simple. So for the flat battery, please refer back to my original uh, battery build video. I will leave it in the description below. Uh, for the block battery, which is here, uh, this is the way it goes. So it's standard. On the BMS, you have a black cable. That's your main negative. So I've got a little tab right there. That's for my negative. That's going to go there. It picks up the main negative of the uh, battery pack okay the next one is p1 then p2 p3 p4 all the way down to whatever piece you've got in my instance is 12 so the red one will be the last pack which is p12 uh, so how would you know what is p1 p2 or whatever not so you always start with the side where your mo uh, master negative is which is here so master negative that is your p1 and you go to your positive side where you got the tab and this is your p1 yeah then a diagonal because we jumped over that's your p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 then remember we folded so we jumped over that's your p7 p8 P9, 10, 11, and 12 at the top right here. And this is what you do. So you run the cables just like that. First cable after the black one is your one, uh, one then two, then three, then four. So we're going to run these cables now. I'm not going to video that. I'm just going to show you how, how it's going to come out to be. One correction, guys. I thought that I'm going to use the... Uh, P12 right there tab for my uh, charge port uh, positive as well because if you think about it technically it's right there it's the positive however we're gonna have our P12 sensor cable on it as well as so I'm just thinking what if it's gonna start messing around with the BMS I don't know technically it shouldn't but I don't know just to be safe what we're gonna do I know we already taped up the top, but that's not a problem. I'm going to add on a positive cable or positive uh, charge cable that's going to go to our charge port on the opposite side from the BMS sensor uh, tabs and directly solder it onto the main bus bar, the positive. On the BMS, if you remember, we have battery negative, 
which went to battery negative bus bar. You also have charge negative. So this is going to go to our charge port negative. Okay. So off of the off of the BMS black cable to your negative of the charge port and off of the positive bus bar you're going to have a cable to come out and that's going to go onto your positive side of the charge port simple as that so that's all that's all really uh, the only tip i'll give you that do not directly solder the charge port onto those cables that's going to come off from the battery because in the end of the you know all of it you're going to have to install this onto your battery enclosure in order to do that you will have to take the nut off of it drill the hole put the charge port on and then plug the cable so i'm going to do i'm going to use some uh, tiny uh, bullet connectors and i'm going to have them on these cables and i have a lead off of the charge port with a uh, male female whatever so when i install this onto the battery box i can just plug them together okay makes sense you can also use xt30 i don't have xt30 xt60 unfortunately is a little bit bigger than the hole you will be drilling through the battery pack sorry through the battery box so you cannot actually push through uh, the hole with it so uh i think that's it okay so let me crack on with this and i'll show you the end result before you wire your uh, charge port yeah make sure you test the cables so you know which connector is which positive and negative so the way i do it because i already have a charger i'm going to use the same charger for multiple boards i've plugged it in and you use a tester normally number one and there are numbers on it is negative so if you test it and it comes up with uh should be 50 volt so when you test it with the uh, tester, it comes out as 50 volt and you had your negative probe on number one, that means it is your uh, correct rotation. So number one is negative. If you would have had it differently, let's cross the cables now, it will come up as negative 50 on your tester. Okay. So there we go. That's a good little tip. I did mention this already at the beginning of the video, however a reminder, unplug the cables out of the BMS before you solder any tabs on, or solder the, the sensor cables onto the tabs. What you can do is use a bit of double sided tape and position the connector like it will be after you're done, this way you know how long the cables need to be and how to run them, but it's not actually plugged in. Not my idea, Brad, thanks a lot mate. Okay guys, so the first six uh, sensor cables are done. As you can see, negative, I decided to go over, jump in there, P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's not too bad. They're all segregated. And now, I'm going to protect this area over with a uh, fish paper because it's going to be like a bridge for the next six cables to jump over to the other block the charge cables are now installed and i also have made the charge plug and the bullet uh, connectors so when i'm ready i can just do this To make it a little bit neater, I decided to use a small piece of insulating uh, sheet. That's going to make this a uh, lovely bridge. Yeah, it's better than fish paper, I think. And now, I'm going to run this over. Okay guys, so the other side, the other block is now connected to BMS as well. All the sensor cables I ran into protect it. I did have a few crosses uh, right at the BMS because of the way uh, the packs are located. However, it's not a problem because what I've done 
is I've used a uh, small size uh, heat shrink tube and I have insulated every single cable that would be in touch with other cable so it's a double insulation that should be absolutely fine okay so we're pretty much done on this front you can if you want to just to check yourself you can test every single uh, connection check uh, out my uh, previous uh, tutorial guys I'm showing how to do this if you need to do it but I'm quite quite confident that I've connected everything for, uh, correctly by the way before we forget uh, temperature sensor yeah just find a place for it somewhere poke it through uh, the fish paper in between the cells or tape them onto the cell or doesn't matter so I'm just gonna probably poke it through right here somewhere and leave it in, leave it inside so now a moment of truth let's plug in the BMS Okay, and happy days guys, battery is now completed and live, and we can see it on the app as well, we can see all the cells sitting nicely at 3.5, eh, pretty much there, they're all at 3.5, really good, it's actually not so bad at all, so that's the beauty of having the uh, smart bms guys because you can do all sorts of things uh, uh, on it okay so now we know it's working which is quite good next step is to tidy up and insulate the whole pack thing guys before we shrink wrap this whole pack is I really want to give this um, the fold a bit more protection it does have a few sharp edges also it's metal just in case I'm going to put a piece of um, fish paper and just put a bit of tape over it I don't know just to give it another skin it's a battery guys it's a battery not a barbecue Okay, so the quick update guys, the battery is charging really nicely, it's balancing really, really well, let me show you. Well, pretty much all within the accuracy of uh, 0 0.002, I would say. They're all at 3924, 3925. Absolutely gorgeous. Never leave your battery, regardless if she's new battery or she's like, you know, trusted battery. Never leave your board alone, you know, obviously go along your business like I'm working in the garden, fixing my garage door, however, always keeping an eye on the battery pack, okay? So it looks so good so far. One thing guys, think, if you got the battery pack ready, are you going to use it straight away? If you're not, how are you going to discharge it? So I'm going to run it to about 4 volts, I would say, per, per, per uh, P-Pack, because I do need it for testing my new hub system on the new board. And after that, well, it might be a week or so before I actually go on the road and be able to discharge this battery. So think about that one. Anyway, next step, guys, is to finish this all off with a nice and, of course, blue, well, for me, because my board's going to be blue, uh, shrink wrap. This shrink wrap here is 300 millimeters flat. It works really well the long ways. Yeah, it fits. But if you want to wrap it again, over this way you need something wider i would say should you should go for 400 okay so anyway let's do the next step guys and finish it off with a few little stickers good work so for the next step guys i'm going to cheat just a little bit sorry but i'm not gonna buy another two meters worth of uh, 
shrink wrap just to do a second side so what we're going to do is mate is quite simple we're going to use this shrink wrap just to cover up the back the front well pretty much and the sides but size is going to be just there to keep the sh uh, shrink wrap in and after that we're going to slide the full sleeve over the battery this way and shrink it down so when you look at the pack from both sides it's going to be fully protected but it's not going to be a single uh, piece of uh, shrink wrap hey it's not cheating really it's nice and safe anyway but if you really want to and i would recommend get yourself a larger piece 400 go over this way first and then 300 this way so you double wrap it like wrapping up a uh, Christmas present but you know that no one will rip it open in 15 minutes or five minutes or five seconds and one of them say thank you this wrap will stay for a while because we did build this battery to a high standard okay so this is what I've done so far it's wrapped up all the way around don't worry when we hit it up it's gonna all take shape and it's gonna be nice okay so that's the little uh, trick so you don't have to buy another size of the heat shrink and now we're going to put the sleeve this way or oh, this way doesn't matter so what we're going to do we're going to cut a piece uh, long enough to be about uh, 50 i would say maybe 60 mil oversized it's always better to cut back the uh, extras than don't have enough and it retracts back too much okay Give it a bit of warmth, take the gun away, and you see it's still working. If you overheat it, it'll split open and just becomes a big hole. And then it sucks. Longing is the music of our sphere. The gift of life is never more or less. Starts at any time you like and ends in just a wink.
guys when you're finished or almost finished just a few stickers you know cars go faster with the stickers on them well batteries last longer and have less sag with stickers on them gorgeous and most importantly made in the United Kingdom well you can't argue with that point it is and on the last touch we're going to mount the Bluetooth module right on the top right here and we're pretty much done And this would be it guys for this video. You can now proudly say that you have built yourself an awesome battery pack yourself. I hope you liked the video guys. Please like it if you did. Please comment if there's something I should consider in the next video. So if you have some different ideas, I always listen. Most importantly, build safely, ride safely and love your life. By the way, in the future videos, we're going to review the new uh, 3D services hubs uh, how to install so that you know what's coming up next on my channel we're going to make a video on how to assemble 3d services finality gear drives we're also going to review some new motors we're going to review some uh, tools well we're going to finish the build of my new board there's quite a few things coming up so stay tuned see you later after videoing for six hours, obviously there are some hiccups. Well, just this is just a few of them. On the previous videos, you guys like this, so well, I left it in. Quality battery pack. I am building an electrical. Blah. Again, battery pack. I will link the link. Oh, fuck off. Uh. I was grabbing it, that's already glued together, so I can only grab it as a block. So we're gonna use it. 12. Anyway, so blah blah blah. Now, to create a battery pack that will take very small uh, footprint, and there's a hair on my head, straight to my fucking face. Get up. So. So 50 volt, oh. 50 volt, uh, blah, blah, blah. 50 volt, hold on a second, so calculator, 4200 times 7, it will be 29,400, 6S, ah. Again, I oh know this was right actually. Two success now, now, now. Beautiful battery pack that you can probably blah blah. blah. <clears throat>